The third message was addressed to the church located in Pergamum, modern Bergama, Turkey, a city about 40 miles northeast of Smyrna. Revelation chapter 2 verses 12 to 17. To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, Thus says the one who has the sharp two-edged sword, I know where you dwell, where the throne of Satan is, and you are holding fast my name, and you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, that you have there some who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the sons of Israel to eat the things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. Thus, you also Nicolaitans, repent, therefore, but if not, I am coming to you quickly, and I will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. The one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who overcomes, I will give of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which nobody knows except the one who receives it, have those who hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. For more than two and a half centuries, Pergamum was the capital city of Asia though Ephesus also claimed this status. Pergamum was a renowned center of intellectual activity in the Hellenistic world, in addition to its political significance. Its famed library of approximately 200,000 volumes was the second largest library in the world, behind the one in Alexandria. Galen, the famed physician of the ancient world, studied at Asclepius Medical School in the city. Pergamum was also a well-known religious center. It was the first city in Asia to embrace emperor worship and construct a massive temple to Emperor Augustus. Emperor worship was mandatory in Pergamum, as it was in Smyrna. To obtain the certificate allowing them to work or run a business, residents were required to offer incense before the emperor's statue and proclaim, Caesar is Lord. Failure to do so resulted in the loss of legal status and persecution. The city was also known for its splendid temples dedicated to Zeus, Athena, Dionysus, and Asclepius. On the city's Acropolis stood the spectacular Zeus altar, the center section of which is now on display at the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. Near the city stood the massive sanctuary of Asclepius, the Greek god of healing. Asclepius was known as the Savior, and was depicted by a serpent, an emblem kept by the current medical profession. The temple of Asclepius was extremely popular during John's time, people traveled from all over the world to be treated by this savior god. Pergamum became known as the War Des of Asia. All of this made life difficult for the Christians in Pergamum. Paganism and its magnificent temples surrounded them. They lived in an environment that was against to their faith. They were continuously witness to the smoke coming from Zeus's altar, which was placed above the city and dominated the entire area. At a time when miracles were vanishing in their midst, they might hear accounts of miraculous healings at the Asclepian, the healing center named after Asclepius, circulate. These factors combined to make the city, where Satan dwells, and where his throne was located, Revelation 2 verse 13. Jesus' message to the church. Jesus introduces himself to the Christians in Pergamum as, the one who has the sharp two-edged sword, Revelation 2 verse 12. The Roman ruler of Pergamum had used gladi, the right of the sword, or the power to execute people. No doubt he utilized that power against Christians. However, Jesus reminds the church that the authority over life and death is solely his Revelation 1 verse 17 and 18. Humans may claim that power, but Jesus has the final word. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world, John 16 verse 33. Jesus said to the Christians in Pergamum that he knew they lived in a place that was antagonistic toward them. They lived in the city where Satan dwelt and where his throne was situated, namely, at the very headquarters of Satan's activities. Yet, most of them remained unwavering in their faithfulness to Christ. They were ostracized in society for not condoning emperor worship and for not respecting pagan gods and practices. Some of them paid for their faithfulness to Christ. Antipas, a prominent Christian, was put to death by the Roman governor because of his loyalty to Christ. Not all Christians in Pergamum remained faithful, though. There were some who compromised their Christianity with pagan practices. 
The fact that Jesus mentions the two groups together suggests that they were related. Actually, Balaam and Nicolaus are the names in Hebrew and Greek respectively. Both meaning, the one who conquers nations. Just as Balaam seduced the Israelites on the way to the promised land to engage in illicit relationships with Moabite women and practice idolatry. Numbers 31 verse 16. These people encourage their fellow Christians to avoid persecution by compromising with regard to emperor worship and participation in pagan socio-religious activities, Revelation 2 verse 14. While the church in Ephesus strongly resisted the teaching of these false teachers, Revelation 2 verse 6, these teachers clearly won some adherents among the members in Pergamum. Jesus encourages the church not to compromise with pagan religious practices. He exhorts them to repent. If they do not repent and turn from the course of their action, judgment is imminent. Christ is coming to wage war against them with the sword of his mouth, Revelation 2 verse 16. Just as Balaam, along with those whom he had seduced into sin, was killed by the sword, Numbers 31 verse 8, a similar judgment will visit the Balaamites and Nicolaitans. The only way to avoid the impending judgment is to repent and make a decisive turnaround in their relationship with Christ. The overcomers in Pergamum, who refused to participate in pagan practices, were promised the privilege of eating the hidden manna, the bread of angels, Psalm 78 verse 25. Because of their refusal to participate in emperor worship, they were deprived of the certificate with their names on it, issued by the Roman governor. However, Jesus promises them a white stone with a new name engraved, entitling them to special privileges that surpass any pleasure of the pagan life. The situation in the Church of Pergamum represents the situation of the Christian Church at large during the period following the conversion of Constantine the Great to Christianity in AD 313. As the Church finally won its struggle with paganism, the Christians no longer had to fear persecution or pressure from outside. However, many in the Church chose to compromise Christianity with paganism. Pagan philosophical ideas and customs made their way into the Church, gradually replacing the Bible as the source of teaching and belief. Although many Christians remained unwavering and faithful to the Gospel during this period, the 4th and 5th centuries witnessed spiritual decline and apostasy, during which the church wrestled with the temptation of compromise.